In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to upgrade your N64 games into widescreen using the Moopin64 Plus Core within RetroArch. I'm also going to be providing pre-configured files for RetroArch so you can play these games in widescreen yourself with minimum hassle. So I was shocked to learn that Perfect Dark and GoldenEye have a 16x9 anamorphic presentation. So that got me wondering, what other N64 games have a widescreen presentation despite the system being released way before the advent of widescreen TVs? And to my surprise, there are actually quite a few. Banjo-Tooie being another rare game that has a widescreen presentation and a lot of these games use a letterbox mode. However, letterboxing was never intended to be used with widescreen TVs. It was a solution to bring an anamorphic image to a 4x3 TV only. Now that wasn't to say that TV manufacturers didn't find a way around this. By allowing you to straight up zoom into the image on the X and the Y axis, completely filling your widescreen TV. Which were pretty rare at the time, especially with a zoom function. So the likelihood that anyone would have seen these games running in widescreen back then, let alone knowing about it, would have been pretty slim. I've even seen Nintendo themselves tout widescreen as an additional feature with the upcoming GoldenEye port to Switch, despite it already having that function in the game. They have since changed their advertising to exclude that, and I don't think it was malicious in any way. I just think it was a complete oversight. So it's just another example of how easy it is to forget that these games actually had 16x9 widescreen support. Now, the scaling method the industry ended up standardizing essentially took a 16x9 adjusted image, crammed that into a 4x3 space, and then it would let your TV stretch that into 16x9, giving you a true anamorphic image. And this would all take place on the x-axis only. And there are actually only a handful of games that do this that were released later on in the system's life cycle, most of them being rare games, just another example of rare being ahead of the curve. The rest of the widescreen library does use letterboxing, and some of these games were truly never intended for a widescreen TV, even if you had a zoom function, as you have UI assets outside of the widescreen space, so you wouldn't be able to see it even if you did crop in, and their menus are still in 4x3, they do not scale into 16x9. But there are still plenty of letterbox games that keep everything within the letterbox space, and that means we can scale these into full screen 16x9, which is exactly what you've been seeing on your screens. This is achieved by setting a custom resolution by using RetroArch's scaling option within the video settings. And the nice thing with this is that it allows you to see the image as you are adjusting it. So I'm just going to use Jet Force Gemini as an example here, as it's already in 16 by 9. I'm just going to fast forward all of this because you get the idea. And it takes a little while to set. There we go. And that's it. That's Jet Force Gemini working in 16 by 9, but absolutely filling the entire screen. I do realize that doing it this way does effectively decrease the resolution. However, it's N64, and I prefer my N64 games to be in a lower resolution anyway. And you always have the option to increase your internal resolution in the core itself to counteract this, but do be aware that you need to do this before you do any scaling, as setting the internal resolution will override any of your custom resolutions. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention, Moopin has an adjusted widescreen option within its core options, and this is essentially the widescreen hack. And this can be hit and miss, but when it works, oh man, it works really, really well. So I did what I do best. I tested the entire Western library and some Japanese games to find out what worked with it and what didn't. And as per usual, I tested it with the native widescreen games to make sure that didn't work better. And I spent up to 15 minutes per game making sure I didn't find any other assets that had pop in. And this is the result of all of my hard work. So I've put all of this information up over on the Launchbox forums. The link will be in the description below. And I've essentially split this list up into four categories. So we'll start with the top one, native widescreen games that can be scaled into full screen. So these are the games where everything is contained within the letterbox space and can be scaled up into 16x9 full screen. Now in this list, I've given a description on how to adjust the in-game options to achieve this. 
and also information on how this will save and load on your next startup of the game. So obviously these are the games that will need scaling into full screen using RetroWatch's scaling function. Now let's scroll down and we have the games that work with the adjusted widescreen hack. So there were actually quite a few games that I found that actually worked with the hack. And like I say, I tested 350 plus games. And then at the bottom here, we have letterbox games that are truly not intended for widescreen. So these are the letterbox games that didn't work with the wide adjusted hack. And they have UI assets outside of the use screen space or menus that are still in four by three. And they're just here for reference. So obviously you can use this list to go through and set your own games to widescreen. Alternatively, if you're lazy like me, you can use this download link here to download all of my pre-configured files to get all of these games running in widescreen. Just hit the download link, download those, unzip them, and then you want to put them in the following folder. So go into RetroArch, go into config, and then you want to find Moopin64 plus next and put them in here. As you can see, I've provided a per game core options file and also a per game config file for RetroArch because I've scaled up absolutely every single game to use up every bit of screen space. So these games are as wide and as big as possible. And I've done this with no distortion. Some games might come up just short of 16 by nine, but I've done that. So like I say, there's no distortion whatsoever. Make sure that your ROM names are identical to these configuration file names. And if they are different, just make sure you change these to match your ROM names. All of the native widescreen games will appear to be zoomed in until you set them to widescreen in their in-game options. And as I mentioned earlier, I've given a full description of what we need to do on a per game basis and also exactly what setting it needs to be changed to, as some games have multiple options. Once you've put those files into that folder, you're good to play some N64 games in widescreen. Now, you may have noticed that I didn't cover widescreen patches or high-res texture packs, which can yield better results. And I do intend to cover them separately in another video. I'm also going to be covering the Project 64 emulator and that widescreen function to see if that works any better. And then what I'm going to do with all of that information is come up with a complete widescreen list for N64 with the methods that yield the best results. So keep an eye out for future videos. And if you appreciate this kind of content, slam me a like and a subscribe. It goes a long way, especially for a new channel. And hit the bell if you want to remain updated. And apart from that, go play some games and I'll catch you next time. Adios.